find anything wrong? Is my heart bad? No, your heart is in fine shape. But what about the pains in my chest and my fast pulse? You could have pains in your chest, even though there's nothing organically wrong. But there must be something. I'm nervous, and, and my heart beats so hard that I can't get to sleep for hours after I go to bed. And the more you think about it, the worse it gets. Is that right? Yes. I get those pains in my chest in class sometimes, and, and find myself counting my pulse. I've fallen down on my work at school, and, and don't get along too well with my instructors. There must be some reason for it. This can't all be my imagination. Well, let's talk about it. Sit down. I repeat, your physical condition is excellent. I can't find anything wrong with your heart or any other organ for that matter. But still, you need treatment. I'm going to refer you to a psychiatrist. A psychiatrist? Gee, Doc, I'm not crazy. No, you're not. And you never will be. Take it easy. Don't let it upset you. A person does not have to be crazy to be helped by a psychiatrist. But what will everybody think? You know people talk. I think the same thing myself. Suppose I had found something wrong with your heart. I'd probably send you to a heart specialist for a complete examination and treatment. People wouldn't think the less of you for that. No, I suppose not. A psychiatrist is a specialist just like any of the others. It's simply that people haven't got used to thinking of him except in connection with insanity. But I still don't see what he has to do with me. I think you are emotionally upset. And in that sense, you are ill. Emotional upsets can produce all kinds of symptoms, can cause real pain and suffering. As a matter of fact, they're one of our most common ailments. That isn't much consolation. Well, you're definitely not an unusual case. Next to the cold, emotional upsets like yours are our most common illness. And now we're treating them as illnesses. I still don't think much of the idea of going to a psychiatrist. My heart's pounding away right now. That's natural. You're excited. Excitement and fear can cause reactions like that. It can happen to anyone. Take the seasoned athlete. Before an important game, he gets all sorts of peculiar feelings. There's a tight lump in the pit of his stomach. He can't seem to shake off that jumpy sensation. He suddenly finds he can't remember signals he's known for weeks. But as soon as he gets on the field, all that is over. He now is the well-trained athlete out there to win. This athlete simply experienced the symptoms of pre-game excitement. Nobody worries about them because everybody knows their causes. Well, you wouldn't say there was anything wrong with that football player, would you? Nor with an actor, for that matter. You've heard about uh, stage fright. That's true, but I'm no athlete or actor. Where do I fit in? We all have the same reactions in varying degrees. You too. Think back. Were you ever called down to see the dean? Remember? You were worried and apprehensive. You mopped your brow. The palms of your hands were sweaty. Your mouth felt like it was stuffed with cotton. You were constantly licking your lips. That was all just as normal as it could be. Well, I was scared. Right. Your brain had flashed a danger signal and your body reacted to it. That sort of thing, of course, bothered a lot of men during the war. In fact, it was so common, the Navy made a film explaining just these symptoms which you, too, are complaining about. 
scare or excite a man and automatically the body's signal system starts functioning. Nerves go into action and stir up a couple of glands. These glands come through with a shot of adrenaline and things really begin to happen. Nerve cells get hopped up. You may perspire freely. Your mouth may get dry as powder. Your stomach may feel tied up in knots. But it all makes sense. You see more clearly. You hear more keenly. Your muscles are tense. Your body is ready to act and act fast. But to act at top speed calls for extra energy. That's where the liver comes in. This is a fuel tank. The fuel is sugar and is stored in the liver. Getting scared gets it out, out to the bloodstream, to the muscles that need it. To get it there quicker, the heart pumps faster. And you breathe harder, bringing in more oxygen to change that sugar into strength. When it really gets going, your heart feels about three times bigger than it really is. And it pounds away like a trip hammer. It may even become painful. The heart may feel as if it had sharp points. Wouldn't surprise me if those are your symptoms. They're much more common than you think. Lots of people have them when they're excited or scared. But when you know you're excited, when seeing the dean, for instance, you don't worry about these symptoms because you understand the cause for them. But if you, a healthy boy, have these symptoms without knowing of any cause, that's the time to consult a psychiatrist. It's his job to uncover that cause. How does he do that? Well, that's his specialty. Let him tell you about it. I'll make an appointment for you. Try not to worry. Thank you, doctor. Well, from all the reports, you seem all right physically. But I do have pains in my chest. Tell me about them. How long have you had them? They started a little over a year ago. Do you recall the first time you felt that pain? Yes. It was during exam week at high school. I was awfully worried about one exam. I got those pains and was afraid of a heart attack. I told my parents about these pains. Father thought it couldn't be serious, but mother worried and took me to the doctor who examined me and said there was nothing wrong with my heart. Did that make you feel any better? Well, mother was afraid the doctor might be wrong. She kept on worrying. But did those pains persist? No. After the exam, they were gone. But I still worried about my heart. Well, the immediate cause of that pain was your worry about the exam. You knew you were excited. And that can bring on many different kinds of reactions. That pain was probably such a reaction. But why do I have the pains now? I don't know yet. But there is a cause. We'll go deeper and find what's really bothering you. How can you find it? We'll just talk. You'll come here regularly and tell me about yourself. I'll ask questions, but mostly you'll just talk about your childhood, family, school, and so on. I wouldn't know where to begin or what to say. Just talk the way you told me about those chest pains. Tell me about your family. Well, we're an average family. Dad works pretty hard. I guess he and I weren't too close. How about your mother? I was much closer to her. Dad was sort of strict. He didn't have much patience, especially when I didn't do what I was supposed to do or when I didn't do too well at school. I remember once, when I was about 10 years old, we had just gotten our report cards from school and I didn't do as well as I had hoped to do. Dad looked at the card and scolded me for not trying. He raised an awful fuss. Mother was sympathetic as usual. 
Dad threatened to make me stay in after school every day and cut out my play. I ran to my mother for protection, and this only made him angrier. He pulled me away from her and wanted to spank me. My sister was scared and cried. I hated my father when this happened, and I used to whisper threats under my breath. Mother finally took me up to my room and put me to bed. I guess I remember this because I didn't think my report card was that bad. But it did leave me with an uncomfortable feeling in my father's presence. And as a result, you learned to depend more and more on your mother for comfort. Your story about the so-called heart attack seems to bear that out. I believe that some of your present upset may be due to a certain insecurity you feel being away from home and the protection your mother offered. Think about that a little, and we'll get together again. These last few visits have demonstrated the presence of an emotional conflict due to being away from home. You see that? Yes, you've brought that out. And as we bring these unconscious conflicts out into the open, your symptoms will tend to disappear or become less exaggerated. I'm taking more interest in my classes. That's fine. As a youngster, was your schoolwork consistent? Not always. You see, I didn't get along with my teacher. I remember being kept after school once because the teacher wanted to discuss my work and general attitude. It was a pretty uncomfortable session. She wanted some explanation for the fact that my work had fallen off and why I seemed to resent her. She told me I had become irritable and wasn't even getting along with my classmates. She took out my old records and tried to find the reason for the drop. I couldn't tell her anything much. I don't suppose she was too satisfied with my explanation, although she did go out of her way to help me. As I look back, I think I blame her for my father's anger at my poor marks. Well, you are making progress. You're beginning to uncover the causes for certain reactions that you had. We can explain your reactions to your teacher at that time, also your nervousness and the falling off of your classwork. All of it was undoubtedly due to a fear of failure and the possibility of incurring your father's anger. But is it common to blame somebody else like I did with my teacher? It's the easiest way out. You felt that you weren't to blame. Your mother's comfort helped that. Your teacher gave you the marks for which your father punished you. Therefore, you put her in the same class with your father whom you feared. Well. There were times when I really hated him. I remember every now and then he'd lock me in a closet. I'd stand there and plan to run away from home. I figured they'd be sorry then. I even planned to kill my father and then run away. And yet you never did. But those thoughts left a mark. You developed guilt feelings you weren't conscious of. Despite all the threats you whispered to yourself, you did have some affection for him as your father. That guilt you felt set up a conflict which only made matters worse. I don't hate him now. I've grown up. But still, I resent those, those in authority. You can't throw off old patterns quite that easily. You carry them over and apply them to new people in completely different environments. You may not want to do that, but you've set a groove which you naturally follow. I can see now that there's no real cause for those resentments. But how will I get rid of them? You're doing that now. Talking about them and reasoning them out does more than anything else. Up to now, you've been prejudiced against your father, your teacher, and those in authority. All this became an emotional block that warped your reasoning. All your thinking came up to it and was warped along certain lines. Understanding the causes will help break down that emotional block. Try it for a while. You're really doing better now. I'll see you on Thursday.
I thought I'd never get here on time. I was playing tennis. You made it, though. I'm glad to see you're taking an interest in outside activities. Well, your heart's not so bad after all. I didn't expect I'd ever be doing it four months ago when I started these treatments. You're coming along fine. How's your work? That's much better, too. I don't spend so much time thinking about myself. But, you know, I have been thinking about something. You've talked a lot about guilt feelings, resentments, uh, lack of security and being away from my mother and other things. Yes, they all apply in your case. But what I can't see is, was I worse than most cases? Does everybody have these troubles? It varies a lot. You're no exception. A single upset can lead to others and usually does. Environment, parental training, and your tendency to magnify certain incidents in your own mind can produce some complex results. Here's a common one. You have a younger sister. Do you remember when she was born? I was four then, but I sure do. Were you jealous? I guess I was. I remember that there was a lot of excitement. My father and mother were busy with the baby and didn't pay any attention to me. When they first told me I had a baby sister, I was happy. But then mother never spent any time with me. I must have been jealous and resentful. I even wished my sister would be sent back. I felt that I didn't count anymore. I can understand a lot of that now. I'll bet you'll tell me that's when I first began to feel insecure about not having my mother to myself. Well, that's probably very true. But there's a lot more to it than just that. As you grew to love your sister, you felt guilty about having wanted to send her back. But most parents realize that and try to minimize it. Yours didn't. Then again, the knowledge that you were going to have a sister or a brother but didn't know how or what put other disturbing questions into your mind. Since your parents never talked to you about these things, you must have thought there was something mystical and evil about them. Parents can prevent a lot of emotional conflict like this, especially where the child is as inquisitive as you were. I got most of the answers when I grew up. Yes, childhood misinterpretations and fears carry over and are frequent causes of emotional upsets in young adults. I know that now. I can understand a lot of things I couldn't before. If more parents understood that their thoughtlessness can produce emotional disturbances in children, cases like yours would be less frequent. But you're really making progress. I feel that I am. Well, we'll get together a few more times to keep you on your toes. Can I go now? I have a date. A date or an appointment? A date. That's real progress. Yes, he did have a date. And from here on, his recovery was rapid. His case was no more serious or complicated than many others commonly resulting from childhood misunderstandings or lack of proper guidance. They can be prevented and cured, clearing the way for that well-balanced state of emotional health so necessary for good progress in school and so important for success and happiness in later life.